Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm your host D-Day bringing you Let's Play Enigmatica 6 Expert Mode. One thing that's super important to mention is that this pack right now is in pre-alpha phase. But I was assured by one of the pack developers that most of the beginning content is finished. So be sure to smash like to keep the series going and subscribe so that you can find the channel again. And if you're ready, then let's play with D-Day. All right, guys, so today we're going to be working on Sushi Go Crafting. Let's see. I have everything I need for the stuff. I put the bookmarks up here. Uh, I wanted to start the episode off with something funny. Uh, Resourceful Bees has the wasabi, uh, which the wasabi, when you click use on it, it makes wasabi combs. And the wasabi combs you can put into the centrifuge to get nori sheets and to get rice and soy sauce, which uh, we'll be getting these things the other way too. But I thought since we're working on Sushi Go crafting today, that we'll go ahead and make the wasabi. And what I think is really funny is the way you make this guy is by having a pollenized water bee float over a house cat. And that transforms it into the, uh, the wasabi, <laughs> transforms the cat. The only way I can make sense for this is that uh, in German, Wasser, it's not spelled that way, but Wasser means water, so water bee. So I guess that makes sense that we're using the water bee for this, but uh, not that it turns a cat into a bee. Uh, so let's grab our water bee. I already went all the way out to a jungle to try to find an ocelot, which I had no luck with. Uh, I ended up finding a village, though, that had a bunch of tamed cats, and I stood still with a piece of fish, and I tamed one of them, so... Gave him gave him a, a name tag for Meow Meow, my cat. Let's go ahead and drop off the water bee, and let's see. It should pollinate the uh, flowers and then fly over our cat and turn it into the wasabi. Or it can take the long route. It's a second try for our cat. He really likes going the long way. There we go. We got our wasabi. Wow, the wasabi's huge compared to the other bees. But we got it. Let's see. I think I still have marble. I'm pretty sure it was marble. Yeah. Because before what I was doing was uh, I was doing block transmutation, transmutation on the emerald bee. And uh, that has been patched out. So now it's the emerald, emerald bee with a uh, diorite cobblestone from Create. And I believe before that, it was something else as well. So they might have patched it again, but it's diorite cobblestone specifically now. Does that work for you, buddy? Yep, it does. Let's get some screenshots. I think I got a good one there. And we'll get rid of the water bee so that we don't have uh, water combs. That's pretty cool. I wonder if it even needs the water block then. All right. Oh, we need one blaze rod. Oh yeah. That's our brewing stand. Where should we put this guy? Right here. Alright, so we need blaze powder. We need three vials. Do we have glass? Two, three. Three makes three. And these need to be water, right? Let's put the, the bookmark up top. We can use a soul shard 
Potion of Swiftness. Let's go Sugar, an Awkward Potion, Nether Wart, and Water Bottles. Okay. All right, so Sugar and now Redstone. Potion of Swiftness. Huh. Wait a second. Potion of Swiftness. Oh, it's a different recipe. So what happens if we run it through with Redstone? Stays Potion of Swiftness. One times two, yeah. Alright, so Potion of Swiftness. We have an Anvil. And where are my soul shards are right here. And Rip Deviant just followed. Thank you so much for the follow. It does mean a lot to me. You're helping the channel grow, and I and I really appreciate that. All right, where can we do an anvil drop real quick? Silk Maws. I have something cool to show you guys in a second with Silk Maws. Let's see. Let's use... We can get rid of this guy. And let's... Whoops, I keep forgetting that my tools are a little too overpowered. You and let's fill up this hole too. And you there. So we're gonna toss in the soul shard and the swiftness. And now we're gonna drop an anvil on it. Yeah, it worked. Cool. Time in a bottle. So now we can let this guy start gathering. That's what's great about AFKing, is this guy's gonna fill up with so much. And I'll just leave the the anvil here for funsies. But what I wanted to show you guys, which is really funny, is uh, the silk moths. Ever since I made these, uh, the silk moth nests, they've been getting stuck on the conveyor belt over here. So what I've been doing is uh, I got a filter set on the other side for the, uh, the cocoons. And that makes them go through the silk fibers. And occasionally I'll get the silk moth spawn egg since the axe has uh, capturing on it. But what's hilarious is uh, this area is chunk loaded. And since I am uh, spending so much time AFKing, uh, they, they tend to also fly in this direction towards the chunk loaded border. And for some weird reason, they're getting stuck at the chunk loaded border because it's not rendering anything past there. And since I have AFK'd for so long, I'll, I'll show you guys instead of spoiling it. It's absolutely ridiculous. See, there's a silk moth up there. See, they're all migrating this way. Like they're heading north, or, uh, they're heading west for some reason. This is absolutely hilarious. Let's see if we can get a shot uh, above the trees. And if you notice, uh, the frames per second are going down a little bit. <laughs> They're gathering over here. And it's kind of ridiculous. I don't know what I should do because all I did was put down three silk moth nests and this could crash a server. <laughs> I don't know if it's a chunk chunk borders thing, uh, but I think they're heading towards the chunk border and then getting stuck. And since I walked this way, it released them all from the edge of the chunk border. So I think if this was on a server, they would keep flying away. But because I have chunk borders set, I think I think they're getting caught and now they're free. So this this might might be bad news bears. <laughs> it's pretty crazy.
But yeah, it's 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 lagfest, lagfest 100 over here, and I'm not sure what what I should do about it. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and put up our our hoe. We really need two buckets of water on us at all times. There we go. And let's see, I think I have everything ready uh, for for deeping, deep diving into Sushi Go Crafting. I'm really excited about Sushi Go Crafting. It's one of those mods that's completely optional, but uh, looks very f entertaining, a lot of fun, and uh, it looks like it's gonna be pretty satisfying. What is that, is that a hammerhead? No, that's a catfish from the side. So what I did is I took a bunch of seaweed from the ocean and I planted it over here a little bit closer so that we can uh, gather some seaweed. And let's see, Magneto should work, right? Yeah. Chop that off. And let's chop these guys down real quick and let them keep growing. And yeah, Magneto only works with an open hand. So that's our seaweed. So let's also go ahead and go get some shrimp and some uh, some salmon and tuna. We have a little area that didn't spawn correctly. It's pretty neat, a little diving hole. So let's go ahead and just farm these shrimp up. We got some shrimp. Come here. Whoa, you guys move pretty fast. What are these dudes? They're so tiny. Let's go into this area again. Oh, the shrimp, they pop out in this form where they get the, get renewed. What are these guys? Drop the fish. We got tuna. Let's snag you. Topico. Did it again. I should click the bar. Alright. Is that Tuna by himself? We found Prismarine though. It's pretty cool. I think that Tuna was solo. Nope. Tuna. Got him. I'm getting better at swinging at fish underwater. Alright, so we're back from getting sushi. No, not sushi. We're back from getting uh, shrimp and tuna from the ocean as well as more seaweed. Uh, these guys, what we're going to do is we're going to balance the grid. Seaweed. Do we have to dry them first, right? into dried seaweed. Got some beef patties in here. Go ahead and dry a lot of them. Drop off the beef patties with the dried seaweed. You can turn them into, yep, you can turn them into dried seaweed blocks. So we also need two blocks of iron and we need to make ourselves a piston. Let's see, do more pistons. Uh, altered recipe. Yep, it requires a bar. Grab some cucumbers, some wasabi, and I think some soybean, yeah. So cucumber, soybean, and wasabi. And we have cows in this pack, right? Let's see, buckets. Let's see how much milk we can steal from them real quick. I know Lily uh, wanted to name the cows Betsy, Joe Biden. <laughs> That's my daughter. All the milk from Joe Biden. And I'm thinking let's go ahead and go up. I'm still working on remodeling this house to match the aesthetic of everything else that's going on. So we can go upstairs. And up here, let's start working on the kitchen. I'm going to end up moving this stuff here. So let's go ahead and do that now. Get rid of this bed. That is my spawn bed though. Let's see. Yeah, it's because we have these these oogly brown beds in here. We do have a trash can, right? Trash, trash. 
There we go. Alright, so right here, let's go ahead and... I would say right about here, yeah. Right about here, we'll put down our block of iron. Then we're going to need one block space. We're going to do a block space. The piston needs to come down here. We'll do another block space. This will be the piston. And then this will be... Should we do another block of iron? Yeah, let's just go ahead and do another block of iron. Break this, this. And let's see, can I dip down here? Yeah. Always have issues putting pistons down. I always have to be one level lower. And like that. And the one thing that I did forget was that we need a button. We should put a crafting table up here. That would make a lot more sense. Put a lever up here so that we can activate the piston. And what we're going to do is we'll put the seaweed blocks under the piston and we can crush them. Yep, and that gives us our nori sheets that we need. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and start working on our milk. We can make these fermentation barrels, which require uh, wooden pressure plates, furnace, and planks. So yeah, let me grab a crafting table or let's just make a new one, right? So the next thing that we need to make is going to be the fermentation barrel. It's just a furnace, planks, and pressure plates. We'll make two of these guys. Let's go ahead and put them next to each other. In one of them, let's see, we should be able to... Yep. Milk, milk. Just drop the milk in. And the milk will slowly turn into cheese. That's pretty cool. We use this cheese to make Philadelphia rolls, Philly rolls, and I don't think California rolls has, uh, has cream cheese in them. Boop. I guess we can keep the extra milk bucket on us just in case. Okay, we're ending up with a lot of these individual items that have progress bars on them, so I would think let's build the cooler box next. Uh, the cooler box is just snow blocks, a chest, and an iron trap door. We can put the cooler box, I would say, on the side over here. From what I understand, we can just put these in here and they will automatically combine. So let's see, we should have other items as well downstairs. Uh, we have the Topico from slaying the fish. There's our salmon, we can grab that too. We have some sesame seeds, but I don't think that this pack has anything, any use for this, for sesame seeds. It must be in a recipe that I haven't learned yet. So let's move this over to the cooler box. These can break down and they'll combine into smaller forms of each other. We can always grab the one that has the most so since we're fermenting cheese with milk in this one, let's go ahead and ferment some soybeans in this one. Let's see. Use. Fermentation barrel with water. Okay, so let's put one bucket of water in here. And let's see what it does. Alright, that's how we get our soy sauce. Oh, and it gives us a not eaten yet. So the soy sauce, can we drink the soy sauce straight up? Can't. Let's go ahead and turn this to easy so that we can uh, get some sprinting going on. Soy sauce, we can move this over here. And do they combine? They do combine. That's pretty cool. The next item that we have to make is going to be the rice cooker. So we need one piece of redstone and rice cooker. There we go. And we'll put it on top of some fancy scoria bricks so it's up high. There we go. We got our rice cooker. 
this guy, what we're going to do is, of course, we're going to make rice. Let's head down here. I have some rice growing in the water. Boop de boop. All right. And I think I have more rice in here. Yeah, we'll grab this rice and we'll drop off the seeds. Okay, so we'll put our rice in here. Ah, oh, it spreads out in four. We need to give it water. And we need to get it a fuel source. So we could put in the planks, but let's just go ahead and put in coal. The rice cooker's working. And it makes us cooked rice. Let's see. Does it take a piece of coal each time, or did I just... Oh no, it takes a bucket of water each time. That's what it is. It did not give me that much rice. That is not a lot. So we need to get a lot of water going for this. But now we can drink some of the soy sauce. Gross. Did it poison me? It poisoned me. It's too much salt. <laughs> Alright. We, do, we don't have that much cooked rice, but... It is a food that we haven't eaten yet. We have eaten the tobiko and the sesame seed. We have not eaten the cheese yet. Okay. The next thing that we should make after the rice cooker is let's go ahead and make the cutting board and the cleaver knife. We need to make the cleaver knife so that we can start chopping up our, uh, our, our salmon and tuna and our shrimp. We need to make the cutting board slabs and logs and let's also go ahead and make the roller while we're here bamboo and string and put the cutting board here okay that doesn't look ridiculous and we can put the roller here yeah that looks fine to me all right so salmon offhand cleaver cool so we're chopping up the salmon and turning it into sushi go crafting there we go. We turned it into salmon fillets. <laughs> it's kind of cool. A bunch of them, so eight of them in total. Let's see, we can drop these in here and have them shrink down to size, right? Yeah, cool. So we have salmon fillet that we also have not eaten yet. And let's see, shrimp. How much shrimp do we have? Wow, they're up here. That's a lot of shrimp. Let's... Oh, we're not going to have to chop this guy up. Since it's already part of the Sushi Go crafting, we can just eat straight up raw shrimp like this. So let's see, we should offhand this guy. Yep, there we go. Tuna from uh, Sushi Go crafting. Again, it's going to be another one of those foods that we haven't eaten yet. That's cool. And drop this in here. Boop, boop. There we go. We're getting, we're filling this guy up pretty well. Cheese. And soy sauce. The soy sauce looks like it's almost full, so I don't want to drop it on and clog up our last spot. We have nori sheets. We have, let's see, wasabi root. Let's do that real quick. The wasabi. Yep, it also turns into a paste. Let's see, we have a whole bunch of wasabi though, so we should watch out. Don't think we're gonna need that much. So shift click. The cucumbers. I don't think we can chop up the cucumbers. Let's see. Oh, we can. It does chop up into cucumber slices. That's pretty cool. Our poor weathered salesperson is being chased by the zombies that are down there. Poor guy. Roller. Salmon fillet, cooked rice, and nori sheets. We'll make the salmon maki. We can do the same thing with tuna maki as well. So let's see. The roller. We'll do cooked rice, nori sheets, and tuna. 
Nice. You have discovered a new perfect weight. Where? It says almost hollow for the tuna. Perfect weight. So I believe that the... Let's see. Does the... Nori sheet... Does the dot mean perfect, or does it? Does the dot mean it doesn't matter? So we're doing salmon right now. So let's put the tuna up real quick so we can learn how this works. All right, salmon, salmon maki, almost hollow. We need more cooked rice and more salmon. So let's do one on each. And there's the dot for nori, so let's see almost hollow but the color of the cooked rice changed it's a little bit brighter now so i think we're getting close so we'll do one more on rice and two more on salmon perfect there we go we did it guys and uh all credit goes to twitch chat for pointing out that there's a little tiny green bar here and that tiny green bar is not inside the uh, the crafting book. So now we know that this is uh, the recipe for perfect salmon maki. It is 24 grams of salmon filet, 18 grams of cooked rice, and one nori sheet. That's pretty cool. So I wonder if we... I think all of these are going to count as the same food, though. But we made perfect salmon maki. <laughs> I know it seems super dorky, but uh, that this this has been one of the most satisfying feelings I've had in Minecraft in a long time, making the perfect salmon salmon maki. So let's see if we can do the same thing with tuna. And let's see if we switch this out. It keeps the same amount. So let's see if it's the same amount for tuna maki well you threw it where'd it go it's on the ground it's still perfect though cool yeah so that's the same same recipe for tuna maki so making perfect tuna maki is also 24 grams of tuna filet 18 grams of cooked rice and one nori sheet we got ducks Oh, do they have duck meat? That might be something new. Bye-bye. Raw duck? Yep. So we need two. We need to eat the raw duck, and we need to eat the... cooked duck. Sorry, buddy. You're an orphan. This is the good stuff right here. Come here. Got him. Salmon. Got a lot of salmon here. So we need avocado. That's the one thing that I forgot about. We have an avocado tree. These avocado trees, they do spawn in the wild. We just got lucky and we had one by our spawn point. Grab some of the avocado. There we go. Avocado. We can do the same thing with the avocado and the, the cleaver. We can go upstairs and we can chop these guys up into slices. Put this guy here. And then use the cleaver. Tobiko Tuna Cucumber California. Let's try this guy out. So we need Cucumber Avocado Tuna. Cucumber Avocado Tuna. Eco. Alright. So let's see. Let's try... Oh, right click to decrease. Okay, let's try all of them down. And it is almost hollow. The tuna is right and the tobiko is right. Everything else needs to go up one. So the nori sheets and the cooked rice will go up one. The avocado and the cucumbers up one. 
Whoops. And now let's see. Okay, so the tobiko and the tuna are still correct. Nori and cooked rice are pink. So nori and cooked rice up one. The other ones are dark red, so avocado and cucumber we're going to do two. You have discovered a new perfect weight. I can't read it. Doesn't it still say hollow? It does still say hollow. Uh, so we need to go up one more on avocado slices. Max avocado. And now it's perfect. There we go. We discovered a new perfect weight. I love this. This is so much fun. So with that, let's see. So to make the perfect Tobiko Tuna Cucumber California, we need 12 grams of cucumber slices. We need 45 grams of avocado. We need 6 grams of tuna. 18 grams of cooked rice. 3 grams or 3 units of nori sheets. And 2.4 grams of Tobiko. I'm kind of curious what we have perfect now. What does the soy sauce and the wasabi add? Soy sauce, and where's our wasabi? So let's do that real quick. Soy sauce and wasabi. Does that change it in any way? Between this perfect and that perfect? I don't think it does. It adds it to the bottom, but it doesn't have a dot next to it. And it doesn't add anything to the percentage or the haunches. So I guess it's just personal preference if you want to have wasabi and soy sauce attached to it too. That's so cool. Thank you so much for joining me today. Smash like to keep the series going and click on my dude here to subscribe for more modded Minecraft. If you want to see the full uninterrupted footage, you can go to my channel on Twitch at twitch.tv ddanicus. The VODs will be saved there.